So guys, gonna be trying a new format today. I'm going to be building one mob and one boss fleet for chapter 14.3 from scratch and explain why I make each decision that I do so you can not only use the fleet as a template but also understand the reasoning behind why it works. I will also not cut out any failures or resets if they happen so you can see the adjustments that I make should the fleet fail to work. Back when chapter 14 first came out, I already had some pretty strong cats and fleet tech, but for players who are just reaching chapter 14 these days, they might not have the same luxury, so I've removed all of the fleet tech and cats just for the sake of this video. Of course, that doesn't mean you should neglect your cats, and I'm sure you should have some fleet tech from acquisition at least, by the time you reach chapter 14. For cats, just try to go with the ones with flame, mountain, forest, battleship firepower, and carrier aviation talents, and that should help significantly in progressing through campaign stages. Mountain and forest are not as good in endgame situations where you have no trouble surviving, but they can make or break a clear when you're progressing. However, I will not be skipping out on submarines, because they help tremendously not only in these chapters but in Operation Siren as well. For all the fleets, I will avoid using ultra rare ships and equipments, and also spamming plus 13s, but not entirely omit them. I think that my equipment choices should be relatively reasonable for someone who is this late into the game. As for levels, going from 120 to 125 will make quite a big difference, so I would highly recommend bringing level 125 ships that you have and replacing the ones that I'm using for ones that you have based on the ideas that you take away from this video. If you can't even do that, then this is probably not the right channel for you, unfortunately. To start off, you will need to choose a good flagship. I'm going with Nelson Retrofit because of her consistency and ease of access. Mine is level 120 with no oath, so if this works then anyone better would work as well. So like Hood, Gascone, Marco Polo, and so on. It's nice to have a 100% proc rate barrage though, so that if you know your fleet works, you won't have to reset as much due to a bad streak of skills not proccing. For her equipments, I'm using a 457mm for its relatively low cooldown to trigger her barrage more often. Since Nelson's firepower and efficiency are quite high, it is not necessary to have the gun at plus 13. The secondary I'm using on her is the one that I found to be the best in chapter 14 other than the rainbow gun, but feel free to experiment with other options if you want. I'm using Stag on her, and all the other ships as well, for the accuracy, just because I have a lot to go around, but it's not a deal breaker. The Flag Auxiliary helps her stack her buffs right away, but as she will be getting hit in Chapter 14 quite often, it's completely fine to run just the white or yellow shell here instead. And of course I'm using Black Shell for damage. It should be one of the first auxiliary equipment that any player upgrades to plus 13, so I'm using a plus 13 one. As for the Augment, I'm generally going to be taking the ones that give evasion for survivability. When I entered the stage, I immediately got hit with 3 2 star mobs, which is a lucky draw for anyone who's progressing but not realistic, so I reset the stage to try to get something that is a bit more realistic. Next up is Unicorn. You can get her right away in the beginning of the game, and she is the best healer, so I don't see any reason not to use her. You can experiment with other healers at your own discretion. For her planes, and any fighter and torpedo bomber slots in chapter 14 really, I'm using a pancake and wyvern. You don't want to use aimed planes like rockets and Ryuse here because the concealment mechanic make them go all over the place. There are also a lot of enemies present at the same time, so all of the AoE and spread will not go to waste. Taking an anti-submarine plane is good for lethal clearing in case submarines slip by your vanguard. The beacon is used for desync, and some other options you could consider are Catapult and Rudder. And again, the Augment is chosen for the evasion. The final main fleet ship is Royal Oak. Given that the other two main fleet ships are both HMS and the fact that survivability is an issue, I thought that this would be a good opportunity to see if her damage absorption is good enough for chapter 14. 
I've never used her seriously after leveling her, so this is going to be a first time for me as well. I'm using an MK7 on her because I'm already using an AP gun on Nelson, and I like to have one of each ammo type with different timings in Chapter 14 so that I don't get stuck forever on an enemy repair ship. The rest of the equipment choices are the exact same as the ones used on Nelson. It seems like I forgot to show it here, but my 14-3 is at 6% defense. But I'm not using any supplementary help and limited my ships and equipment, so I think that you should do just fine on lethal with better ships and equipment. I also want to talk about the strategy when tackling these stages. The most difficult fights are going to be the out of ammo ones, so you want to save some non 3 star fights for when you're out of ammo. This is not a problem in 14.4 as there is an ammo node, so 14.3 is probably going to be a little more difficult if you're just trying to clear the stages. As for the flares and lighthouse, I take them for the boss fight, but the mob fight gets a little spooky if it drops on an enemy that shouldn't be focused and then the flare ends up increasing their priority. So you can experiment with taking it for mob fights, but I'm going to try doing the stage without them. Sometimes, your main fleet ships will get burned by the enemy battleships and lose half or more of their HP in one fight. So pay attention and reset if that happens. And I'm going to go back to talking about the ship and equipments. So in the Vanguard, I'm using Noshiro as my tank, because Big 7 gets blocked by shields, so I want to use a torpedo-focused Vanguard to shore up that weakness. Her equipment choices are a cookie cutter for a tank-like cruiser, and the torpedo choice won't make her breaker clear. I just went with these for fun. Most torpedoes, whether magnetic or not, will work just fine in chapter 14 because there are so many enemies that the torpedoes will likely crash into something. Just try to make it so that they have different cooldowns to increase damage uptime. In the middle vanguard slot, I need a destroyer to carry the hedgehog. I would recommend upgrading hedgehog to plus 13, although it isn't needed, but it definitely helps. I chose Kawakaze because she does not care about shields is as strong as any destroyer, and makes the most out of Nashiro's buffs. She also doesn't need any fancy equipment at all outside of her unique augment, and she is neither event limited nor locked behind research. I used an oxytorp on her, but to be safe you could bring a toolbox or a fire extinguisher. And finally, in the rear, I bought Scylla because why not? Like Kawakaze, she doesn't need any fancy equipment. I have the rainbow AA on her just because, but it is not necessary at all. I am using the blue gun rather than a damage gun like the rainbow 100mm because of the concealment mechanic, making aimed damage less reliable in chapter 14 compared to anywhere else. But using the 100mm or 140mm would not be much worse if at all. And that's pretty much the idea for the mob fleet. To summarize, Nelson is there as a 100% AoE barrager, unicorn for sustain obviously, Royal Oak to increase main fleet survivability, Nashiro to tank and increase vanguard damage, Kawakaze for damage and anti-submarine warfare, and Scylla for more damage. Next, I'll talk about the boss fleet. I wanted to use Aurora because both of the bosses are destroyers, and then Harbin to protect her with the smoke screens. And of course, Yatsun is a natural consideration as tank if you're going to use Harbin. The equipments are quite basic. Focused around survivability, and good guns and torps that are not excessively difficult to obtain or upgrade. In the main fleet, Hood is a good option that is easily accessible, and I'm just using plus 10 gold equipment with relatively low cooldowns to spam her barrage. Next, I'm using Taiho as a slow carrier who doesn't have much trouble surviving, just to desync with Hood. Again, all of her plane choices are centered around having as much AoE as possible, and her barrages also help with that. The last ship is Independence who can easily desync from other main fleet ships to increase damage uptime. The plane choices are the same as all the other carriers I've been using, and I'm using a rudder just in case she gets focused because she is relatively squishy with only around 5k HP. There aren't many planes in the boss fight, so Scepter would be better as an augment choice, but I was too lazy to change it.
In total, the two light carriers as well as Taiho gets me to AS+. For the submarine fleet, pretty much any gold torps will work just fine for this situation. And snorkels, as well as just using submarines that have high oxygen capacity, will help them not surface and get destroyed immediately. I said that I'm not going to be using cats, but I'm bringing submarine cats just for the hunting range. Submarine cat skills actually do increase the usefulness of submarines by quite a bit, so you should definitely try to get a decent steel and edelweiss. Feel free to cry in the comments about how I'm using submarine cats so it doesn't count. Submarine gun choice doesn't matter, so just choose any that has 45 total stats to maximize their preemptive strike damage. You can use them both for their preemptive strikes or turn that off and summon them into multiple battles, which will help more but cost more oil as well. But definitely save two charges, one for the out of ammo fight and then another one for the boss. Okay, as you can see here, Royal Oak caught on fire and almost died, so I have to reset this fight. This time, it went a bit more smoothly. And I saved this 2-star fleet for when I'm out of ammo. And I'm also able to summon my submarines to take care of it quickly. Anyways, to fill up some dead air, I guess I'll talk about some off-topic stuff. I just finished this year's tier list series, so if you haven't watched them, feel free to check them out. I found it very entertaining that a lot of people took it much more seriously than I did myself. The more they get butthurt, the more of a kick I get out of it. But I just wish more people would fight amongst each other in the comments so that I can have a good show, rather than just leaving a useless criticism that nobody cares about. I also don't like when someone doesn't get a joke and then someone else comes and explains it to them, as I'd much rather leave them angry and confused. I might make a Q&A later, answering questions about the tier list, seeing there are many of them, but I definitely don't want to be going back and forth with people in the comments like a loser. And with that, the boss is summoned, so the mob fleet did work decently well, all things considered. So yeah, halfway into this boss fight, I realized that I didn't take Lighthouse or Flares. So I reset the boss to grab the Lighthouse and Flare and then try again.
Since Yatsen is an evasion tank, and the enemy also drops flares on your vanguard, her survivability is actually a lot lower than usual, so you probably want to choose another tank for this stage like Anchorage. Aurora also has trouble surviving, so you can just bring somebody else like Anshan, because your own flares and lighthouse will reduce the evasion of the bosses anyway. So at this point, the boss is pretty much dead, but I'm just going to exit out because I don't want to reduce the threat level of the stage any further so I can do some further testing. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys find it useful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.